Hey, back up! Whoa, 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 do you have any idea what happened here? No, he just brought us something to eat. Okay. So we sit on the couch eating, and then I just heard gunshots. Warning, some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Growing up, Tyrone loved to play football. He also ran track for his high school. His family described him as a caring young man with a bright future. He would never want to hurt a soul. Tyrone truly loved to protect everyone. Tyrone decided to join the army at a young age. Some doubted his ability, but he proved them wrong when he became the youngest sergeant. At the same time, as he became a sergeant, he fell in love with a soldier named Kemia. Shortly after becoming a couple, Tyrone and Kemia got married, and she became pregnant, giving birth to a boy who they named Tyrone Hassel IV. On New Year's Eve 2018, Tyrone was shot while on holiday vacation visiting his family. Just an hour before midnight, Army Sergeant Tyrone Hassel was gunned down outside his father's home in St. Joseph Township. When the officers arrived, Tyrone was slumped against his truck with several gunshot wounds. Officers noticed he was shot in the head, back and shoulder, and his wife was on the scene screaming. Shortly after talking to her, Tyrone's father arrived at the crime scene in total shock to see his son being taken on a stretcher. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. Tyrone was never the type to have problems. He was always out of trouble. The first thought the officers had was a robbery gone wrong, but Tyrone's truck and wallet were still at the scene, so they ruled that one out. They also ruled out anything drug-related. Officers also learned that Tyrone had a younger brother that would hang out with the wrong crowd, so maybe this was a case of mistaken identity. The family wants to find the person responsible for a New Year's Eve shooting that left a 23-year-old active military member dead. You don't know why this will happen to him, so we really, really want to know why. The next day, police returned to the crime scene during the day, talking to Tyrone's dad. They showed him pictures of possible suspects from surveillance footage, to which he declined ever seeing them. When knocking from door to door, officers got to speak with a gentleman named Walter, who stated he saw a suspicious man parking his car right before the shooting occurred. Because he was here, what, two or three days ago? And part there. The same way. After 10 days with no promising leads, investigators got an anonymous call that guided them to investigate Tyrone's army platoon. She claimed Kimia was having an affair with another soldier while deployed in Korea. She told them how in Korea, Tyrone had an argument with the other guy Kimia was sleeping with. She stated he might be the person they were looking for. So they were in, they were all in Korea, and that's where it started. He and the girl had a relationship going on and that the guy that dad had said something to him so they had words and then he had threatened him. So if they are here, the only thing is that the funeral is tomorrow, you guys should look at the wife. With that information, the investigators started looking into Fort Stewart, Georgia, where Tyrone and Kemia were based. When asking around, two people came forward with information. The one gentleman said Tyrone found out his wife was cheating on him. He stated Tyrone returned home and found her sleeping with Jeremy, another soldier. You said Haswell did know there was something going on between two of them. Yeah, I was in the car. Uh, did you ever talk with her while he was on leave or anything like that? So he just can't wait to get back to the States so he can get a divorce from his wife. The second person said he sold Jeremy a pistol two weeks before the murder occurred. It was more than enough information to place Jeremy under arrest and question him. When the officers read him his Miranda rights, he asked for a lawyer. Jeremy failed to see that officers knew about the confession he told his friend. When they were hanging out, Jeremy told him how he saw Tyrone in the driveway and shot him several times. He also stated what gun he used to kill Jeremy. And at this point in time, do you wish to have a lawyer? Uh, yeah. Since officers had one suspect, they focused their attention on Kemia. Officers brought her down for questioning. They suspected she knew more than she claimed. First thing they asked her was about the affair she was having. Um, when we were in Korea, um, I can't really pinpoint exactly what it was. Me and Ty had this big argument. And then, you know, I came back and to the building. I was talking to Jeremy. I'm like, man, I don't want to be with him anymore. Like, and he was like, I can handle that. And I was like, you know, what do you mean by that? He was like, I can handle it. I get that guy, I get a gun, blah, blah, blah. 
Really you guys are surprised sexual somewhere throughout all this. You have to be to have this kind of for me to get this hold on you. He's had a breakthrough sexually to you. I'm guessing first. Not even, not even just sexually. It's just I just was feeling so bad, like with Todd, like nothing me not wanting to be with him, but just just how I was being treated. I was just feeling so bad. After giving her reasoning for cheating, she also told investigators she would never want to remarry because Tyrone was a great husband. Detectives asked if she would take a polygraph test to prove her innocence and she accepted. After taking the lie detector test, she failed showing she was being deceptive. When confronted with the result, Kimia changed her story. She would begin to throw Jeremy under the bus, stating she was tricked into killing her husband and she really didn't want him gone. She continued telling the investigator about a past time when Jeremy attempted to kill Tyrone. Jeremy stalked her husband at a local nightclub, but he never shot Tyrone since there were a lot of people around at that time. C50, you guys were on this? Yeah. Okay. Because I knew all about it, and I, like I said, I, I probably could have stopped it, but the reason that I didn't, because I felt like he would, you know, be mad at me. She told the investigator on New Year's Eve she was texting Jeremy all day telling him about her husband's whereabouts. He told her he will be killing Tyrone today. She replied by saying okay and to wait outside because her husband would be home soon since he went out to get something to eat. Putting the murder plan into effect, Jeremy would wait outside and when Tyrone arrived he exited his vehicle and proceeded to shoot him multiple times, believing there was also a bigger motive to why she would want her husband dead. Detectives checked to see if Tyrone had a life insurance plan. Not really surprised when they found out he did have an insurance policy. Detectives saw she would get his military life insurance worth $400,000 if Tyrone was to pass away. Money is part of it, yes. Okay. But the main reason being is because I just felt like if I would have called it off, like Jeremy probably would have like, been up. And then he was, he was out there and he was watching the house the whole time. Okay. So it was, I told him that he was bringing us like something. Tamia and Jeremy were both charged with first-degree murder in the death of Tyrone. Investigator felt like they had a strong case against Camia, so she was the first to go on trial. Camia's defense team played her out to be a victim and paint Tyrone as a villain. They stated investigators used unfair police tactics to get her to make a fake confession. Investigators showed a phone call recording that proved she knew about Tyrone's killing. Hello, this is a call from an inmate at the Berrien County Jail. What's going on tonight? I'm in the jail. Why are you in jail? Because I, I, I knew what was going on. Did you? What you mean you knew what was going on? I know what was going on with Tyrone. You what? I knew what was happening. Come on, are you serious? You gotta be kidding. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Girl, you're 22 years old. And these people come out and you was living a double life and you done had your husband killed? The father of your child? Are you talking about I'd be disappointed? No, I'm disappointed in this. After three days, the jury returned with a verdict, and she was guilty of first-degree murder. The jury also found her guilty of conspiracy to commit murder. She was given life without parole. I'm going to ask, sir, if you would please read in count one the verdict. Guilty of first-degree premeditated murder as aider or better. Thank you. And as to count two? Guilty of conspiracy to commit first-degree premeditated murder. All right, thank you. A month later, Jeremy's trial began, and the jury heard and saw the evidence provided. It didn't take long for the jury to return their verdict, and as they did with Camia, they found him guilty of first-degree murder and gave him 65 years in prison. I can tell by the way you look, man, you want me to burn in hell, sir. And I understand that. I understand that. You know what I'm saying? You know, I really hope you can forgive me. You know what I'm saying? I know it's going to take Father, well, you might not, but no, I really hope you can. True enough, you killed my son, but I don't, I don't think I, I, I know I'm looking at somebody that had a twisted mind at one point, you know, seemed like a good cat. And um, I hate the situation had to happen, especially I hate to have to happen to my son. I'm never gonna, the only thing I could do is visit him in the grave.